Hello and welcome everybody. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. This is Adam from Miller's Custom Guitars and the N Plus One podcast. I am so glad you could tune in today. Um, this is the show where we talk about our hobbies, passions, and obsessions. And on N Plus One, the whole idea is that there's always one more thing on the horizon. There's always one more thing that you're pursuing, that you're trying to reach for. There's always one more guitar that you're looking to buy. Always one more mountain to climb. Always one more painting to paint. Um, and so that's what this podcast is all about. It's always about not just what you're passionate about, but also what is next. And today I'm so excited to be joined by my good friend, Jason. Jason Rivera is here with me today. Um, we go way back. We were just here catching up uh, for a couple minutes and my son walked in and he says, I don't know you. And I was like, yeah, but he knows you. He was around when Ezra was uh, not even born yet. And uh, so that we go back um, 10 plus years or almost maybe probably around 10 years or so. Actually, I think that Easter service, weren't you just Weren't you just scoping around that Easter service? Yeah, I was I think just it was, like, I was just kind of getting the vibe, feeling what, yeah, what God was leading. Was, I think it was after that Easter service that you started poking in and being like, hey guys, I'm around, I'm a yeah. person now. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so um, Jason, I'm so glad that you can be here. We have been doing a mini series on church leaders in the modern church. And on this podcast, we kind of talk about everything you know we talk about guitars because i'm a musician we talk about photography we talk about quilting acting we talk about just whatever people are interested in but i'm also passionate about my beliefs mm -hmm. and i i didn't want to leave that out of this podcast and not talk about it and one of the things that i believe kind of happens and has been happening is that christians have kind of gotten a bad rap lately it's been you know like christians you know it's it's in the it's in the bible that we're going to be persecuted but i don't think it's just that i think the culture has shifted to to the place where there's christians that are definitely doing things that are that are antagonistic and hateful mm -hmm. and then all christians get lumped into that group and they say if you believe this way you know anybody that believes or follows you're all bad and I wanted to talk to modern church um, leaders, find out how people are reacting to that, how people are interacting with the modern culture. Um, and I, I've talked to Ryan Lochi, who is a worship leader, and I talked to Adam Dohanek, who is a pastor. And now I'm so excited to talk to uh, my good friend, Jason Rivera, who has been a worship leader mm -hmm. and is a youth pastor. And he's just a baby. <laughs> He's just a baby youth pastor. Baby youth pastor. I found out. So one of the things that happened was I was looking for people to talk to. And um, I was looking through the, the website for a church I used to attend to get the contact information for the children's ministry director for that church. And I was scrolling down and I saw <laughs> this man's face <laughs> under youth pastor. Yeah. Yep. Um, and the last I checked, he was the worship director. And I was like, what's going on here? Yeah. So I wanted to g talk about this a little bit. Um, and I wanted to, s to say, first of all, what even is youth ministry? And I always say it like this, describe it as you would a to a five-year-old yeah, 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 and then you can kind of go up from there because we're mostly adults mm -hmm. but what is youth ministry yeah so i mean awesome thank you adam for having me on thank you so much for I'm coming on i'm super excited i've been following along on your instagrams and watching the youtube and thank it's you. cool like it's cool to just have different perspectives from people that we all like know but then also people that i don't know right yeah. and so i'm like oh but I know you, right. and I'm so I'm thankful for it. It's super rad. Um, and I appreciate the question because I literally had uh, my 6-year-old and 12-year-old in the car. And my daughter, who's 12, she said, uh, so I have 6, 12, and 14. And I'm okay. sure I'll talk about my kids throughout this. But uh, my daughter, who's 12, she was like, Dad, what do you do at work? 
what do you, what do you do? And in her mind, you know, a youth pastor, um, you know, is the guy that like maybe thinks up a fun game or some silly thing that you mix together and then you make students drink it. And, Definitely. You know, or or you uh, are the guy that's like the camp leader, director guy, you know, or the guy who has way too many Little Caesars boxes in the back of your truck, you know, yes. after a weekend. Um, and so, so that's a good start, right? When I talk about um, being a youth pastor to my kids or to a five-year-old, I say, hey, it's my job to um, come alongside people that are in uh, middle school or high school and teach them about Jesus. Okay. That's my job, you know? And then if I were to go up from there, yeah. if I was to like take the next step, man, it just gets like a lot deeper because yeah. there's um, what I thought or what I would have considered a youth pastor and being a pastor before a few different times and doing different types of ministry, which we'll talk about, I'm sure. But, you know, I always kind of wondered like, what do these guys do? What, what is the, what is the, like, what do they do all day? Cause it doesn't take that long to prep a sermon and it doesn't take that long to, you know, pick a worship set that goes with the sermon. But the crazy part is, is what I've found, what I do is my responsibility to like come alongside our students and actually have an experience to like, hopefully change a culture. Change a generational yes, culture definitely. of people that can get an understanding of we serve a God that cared just as much about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, right? As he does about Adam and Jason. And so yeah. trying to bring that reality and truth to some students yeah. is what I would say, you know, my role is. That's, that's amazing. That is so incredible. And it's true. Man, uh, Jason, that's really great. Um, I mean, that's a really great description. How, what I want to know is... <laughs> The last I talked to you, um, you were the worship director at uh -huh. Sierra Bible Church and you were training your replacement because mm -hmm. you were getting out because it was too much work for you and you had too much other stuff on your plate. Mm -hmm. And then I look over and you're the youth, you're the youth pastor, youth director guy. Yeah. Um, how did you get into <laughs> this? What, how, did, uh, I said this in the text message, how did they rope you into this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What was your gateway drug? Yeah, to you? exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, if you don't mind, I'm just going to back, back up. Yeah. Tell us all about so, it. So I have been um, in ministry uh, for uh, just about 10 or 12 years, somewhere sure. in that. I, I went away to a school of worship. I got my like certificate of worship ministry leadership. Right. Um, I came back, worked at a local church in Tuolumne County um, for a little while, doing all kinds of different things. I was right. like the youth worship band leader, and I was like this young adults pastor, and I just did all kinds of different jobs there, clean the toilets. Of course. You know, whatever. It doesn't matter. So, right. um, so in that process, I, I bought a company, and I started a home inspection company. Um, I kind of bought one and then rebranded it and changed it and grew that company. I've owned that. January 14th of this year will be 10 years that wow. I've had that company. And um, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, that we'll get to that part, but I'm actually, it's almost done. I'm almost, uh, it sells February 1st. Oh, really? Yeah. So, which is a, you know, a crazy topic too, but that kind of comes a little bit later in my story. Doing ministry, we um, felt called to leave our, the church we were at, and that's how we kind of ended up at the church we're at now. Um, and we, came there and I served alongside the worship pastor there and got super involved in the worship ministries. And it was awesome. It was super fun to, to be able to use those gifts and talents that I knew God had given me to glorify and edify his name. It's like my key mm -hmm. phrase, right? You've probably heard me tell you that. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, you know, worked there or, um, then there's some transition happened and we just felt called that it was our turn to like stay and help like hold the church together. And so, we did that, and I served as the worship pastor for um, about three years. And in that process, I was, like, juggling this, like, owning my company, mm -hmm. being the worship pastor. I was working part-time at the church, so I wasn't really, you know, I didn't feel like I was being able to give what needed to give. Right. To, like, do the ministry well. Right. So I, uh, I went to, uh, we started this, like, thing called the Worship Collective, where mm -hmm. we were, like, 
getting a bunch of different churches together mm-hmm. and doing worship nights. And I found my replacement, basically. Mm-hmm. He, uh, his name is Brian Stanton. He's a super talented worship leader. And so I went up to him night one, mm-hmm. and I was like, hey, do you want to be my assistant? Mm-hmm. And he agreed, came in, brought, brought him for the elders. They had let me hire him as my assistant. He worked for me for about a year. And during that process, I was like, this is the guy that needs to be a worship pastor. I'm going to butt in because I, I've, I've known you for a long time. And like, I know exactly how this conversation went, <laughs> you know, like I can just imagine the whole thing, you know, yeah. it's just like, I, I just, I know you and it's just like, yeah, you, the way you described it. I'm like, yep. I can imagine being there and just walking, having you going, guess what? You're my assistant. Yeah. That's, this is happening. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. anyway. Yeah. So, so I brought him in and then I felt this pressure, this not pressure, but calling for almost for his life where he was 24 years old, mm-hmm. which is young. That's young. Yeah. Right. And I was like, if, we're old guys. Yeah. He's, that's young. I was like, if anybody would have taken a chance on me at 24 years old, I believe the trajectory of my life would have changed. Mm-hmm. So I went to our elder board and I said, Hey, this guy's getting married. Um, I believe that he has a, a heart for worship and for our community. And I think we should take a chance on him, hire him full time. Mm-hmm. And so they agreed with me. We hired him full time. I stayed just helping and doing the things and slowly kind of like all ministry. If you're not like in it all the time, it's easy to just like boop, 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 fade, fade, mm-hmm. fade, fade. Right. At least for my life. And so, um, I was just kind of living in this place of like, I don't know. I didn't feel like I was living out my calling, you know? Mm. And so I, uh, I was still doing my, um, business Mm -hmm. and I actually started another business. Oh gosh. I started a pest inspection company. Okay. Yeah. So that started in 2021. I partnered with some guys. We Mm. launched this company. It was called best or it's called best pest Sierra. Mm -hmm. So we like launched this company. I'm super excited, but I'm still like missing something in my heart. And so, uh, I spoke at a national conference okay. uh, for home inspectors in September of 2021. Uh, mm-hmm. And at that conference, I got to sit around a table with guys that have, are killing it. Like they're way better at it than me. Mm-hmm. They have hundreds of employees, mm-hmm. all these things. And they basically told me, you have to give an end date for when you're going to stop inspecting. So I chose September of 2022. And I, my plan was to just run the company, but I was so unhappy. Mm-hmm. And so we started um, prepping for me to come out of uh, out of the daily business side mm-hmm. of it. And in the first week of July, uh, I found out that our existing youth pastor was going to be let go. Mm-hmm. And they asked me because I was like had been on staff and mm-hmm. had all my stuff. Mm-hmm. They asked me if I would go to Hume Lake. Sure. And, Sucker! And in my in my heart, okay, hold on, I can finish this story for you. I'm yeah. just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> in my heart, the um, I was already separating from my company, so I had more free time. Mm-hmm. I had this broken like void in my mm-hmm. heart. I uh, <laughs> I had never been to Hume. Yeah, oddly sure. enough, yeah, never been. So yep. I go up to Hume. I spend a week with the high school students, and it changed my life. Yep. So. My life was changed at Hume. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get tears because, you know, I grew up as a Christian mm-hmm. with Christian parents who are amazing. And, you know, it was, you know, it was my parents' faith. And it was a Christian. It was a summer camp. It was Hume Lake where I was like, like, whoa, this is real. This is not my parents' faith. This is my faith. And it was the friendships that I made and it was the youth counselors. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that's, you know, that's when it became real for me was those Christian camps when I was in high school. Yeah. And, you know, my life's dream would be to be the band at a Christian camp. Yeah. Because those bands are ridiculous. I remember every single band that ever played at a Christian camp and they were the best band that ever played. Were they the best band that ever played? No. Were they the best band that ever played? Heck yeah, they were. Yeah. I mean, Spooky Tuesday, Everybody Duck, uh, Steve Mills. I mean, I remember these guys. Yeah. And they impacted my life so 
so deeply. Um, you know, Future of Four, she, uh, they weren't Future of Four back then. They were, um, they were uh, something like Silas, you know. These guys were so incredible and so important to my life. So when you said I got roped into going, you know, they asked me if I would go to Hugh Mike. I was like, yeah, I know how this story ended. Yeah. Because, I mean, Hugh Mike is such a great ministry. Yes, it's expensive. Yes, it... Mm-hmm. They they trick you into having your life changed with all the fun that they have, right? And it is fun. You are gonna have a great time, and they, you know, if if you're open to it, you're gonna have your life changed, right? You know, and and look, it's a business. It's, it's expensive, and the stuff there is expensive, and you can also go to him like with no money in your pocket mm-hmm. and have a great time, also, mm-hmm. and. Have your life changed? Yeah. It's it's a great place. It it really is can you know can be life changing, and it was for me for sure. Yeah, yeah. So it was, and, and here's the kicker to it. Guess what age boys I was cabined with? I'm guessing your, it, your you kid. Remember that it changed my life. So I mean, you would have to think it was like the seniors, right? I'm guessing you were bunked up with your kid, right? I had 13 freshman boys. <laughs> <laughs> these are the slime. These yeah. are the these are the worst kids on the planet. Well, they are smelly, <laughs> and they don't sleep, and it's just penis jokes. Yeah, the whole time, <laughs> and there is so much, so much chaos that happened. But the whole time, the whole time, to your point of like it, you having your parents' fate. Oh god! I had this piece stuck in my mind that was like. How do we create a bridge? <laughs> the penis joke is still getting you. No, I, so I remember when I was we were at Hume, Hume Lake, and someone made a joke about morning wood. Yeah. And th- I guess at a previous summer camp, um, they had written a song about it, and and then all of a sudden, Chad Pippen, who is one of my dear friends who was like probably like my guitar, my worship mentor, probably after my dad. Yeah. Like it's like my dad and Michael Roberson and like Chad Pippen yeah. are all like right there. Bursts into the room and just strums more the Morning Wood song. And I told him this story. And he goes, no, that didn't happen. Yes, it did, Chad Pippen. Yes, it did. That did happen. And he played the Morning Wood song for all the, the freshmen and sophomores that were in there. Maybe we should try to rewrite it. I don't you remember know? it. I, I'm sure I it can he... come to you. It'll just pop up. You'll be fine. Anyway, go ahead. Uh, so, yeah. So, it was crazy because to your point earlier where you were talking about how you lived in your parents' faith. Right. Right. So I believe that when I was up there that I had this feeling of like, how do we create a bridge? How do we create a bridge where it's not just like you're under your parents' faith and then you go to college and try to figure it out, kid. Right. We need some sort of bridge that's like, these are the steps you take. This is the trust that you have to have. This is who God is. And um, yeah, so... I came back uh, from camp and I walked into Pastor Nate's office mm-hmm. at the time <laughs> and I walked in on a Monday and I said, hey, uh, you're going to hate me because fun fact, I had been asked to be the full-time worship pastor twice Yeah. and I had accepted once and then immediately declined like two weeks later and then, which I don't know how you actually do that. You like accept and then you turn it down. But then I still stayed on as the part-time guy. And then I got asked again, and I turned it down. Yeah. And that's when the Brian story Mm -hmm. started. And so I come into Nate's office, and I was like, you're going to hate me, and the elders are going to hate me more. Because I want to apply for the youth pastor (laughs) position. (laughs) That's amazing. And so, yeah, it's just been, I started September 29th, so I am like a baby youth pastor. And I've learned a lot. I have. Mm-hmm. I'm so excited for the youth, uh, you know, in the like the continued future. Right. I told Brian today or yesterday, he has a little baby girl who's about, you'll love her. You, oh, my gosh. I, know I love you all are. babies. I know. But this baby. Oh, okay. Is, her name's Galilee. Oh, my gosh. That's wonderful. Yeah. So Galilee is about a year old. And oh. I said, I want to be the youth. I want to resign the year that Galilee graduates from high school. Oh, that's wonderful. What a great vision. Yeah. 
That's amazing. Yeah. So, and then in the in the process, I've um, been selling my companies because uh, I want this to be my career. I want wow. to chase after this, and I feel like I'm not going to be held down. My wife and I are selling some of our stuff to be out of debt. And, uh, Dude, that's amazing. We um, sold wow. Best Pest Sierra to one of my um, employees uh, who uh, was an entrepreneur and he worked for me for a year or two. And so I sold that to him and one of my other employees is buying Core and we're going to close February 1st and I couldn't be more excited. I can't. I seriously, I did not expect that story. Yeah. Wow. I was like, how are you going to do this and still run Core? Yeah. And then you said you started another business. I'm like, you got too much stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you did have too much stuff. And guess what? You go, you're all in. Yeah, all in. Wow, that's amazing. Wow, what an amazing story. And, you know, having done youth, I've worked, I've done youth a couple times. And it's just like that. You know, you, you and the thing with youth, <laughs> the thing with youth is they know when you're faking. Yep. They smell it out because they... They get it all the time. You know, they have teachers that are faking it. They have friends that are faking it. They they know when, especially adults, are faking it when they're giving them a load of crap. And you can't. You got to be yeah. all in. And they they you know they already don't have a lot of respect anyway. Yeah. But they they at least respect sincerity a little bit. You know. Um, so normally I ask people, what are some misconceptions that that people have, you know, about the thing, but I feel like you haven't been long and been there long enough to just know. So, but I'll say, what are some misconceptions that you've discovered that you've had about yeah. youth group, youth ministries in the not even six months that you've been doing it? Yeah. So kind of back to my, you know, cause I was on staff there before. Right. So that misconception of like, uh, what does this person do all day? Mm-hmm. That has been an interesting feat for me to figure out. Not only am I like teaching three, three to four times a week. Okay. So, I mean, you think of like <laughs> a, the, the pastoral threshold, right? Mm-hmm. And like our like lead pastor preaches two times a week on the same day. And I preach like Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday night. And I'm teaching um, at some like three or four different discipleship classes around the county. One for a school which is awesome. Um, so I found myself like, oh yeah, I can get buried in sermon prep sure. first. And thank God I have a good lead pastor who won't let me. Okay. And also has done that job. Done that job for a long time. Long time. Yeah. And done it pretty well. Yeah. And yeah. basically has, uh, I love that we have the type of relationship where he's like, Jason, you're not going to do that. I came in hot. I came in hot, like this is what, which what? is you wouldn't believe. Jason about Rivera me. came in hot. Yeah, no. I came in hot. I'm like, <laughs> I want to do a sermon series on the kings leading to the king, and for Christmas, I want to end on Christmas the kings of all the kings leading up to King Jesus, and um, he goes, nope. And I was like, what? I mean, how could you not want that? Like that sounds awesome. It sounds epic. And he's like, no, because I'm not going to allow you to spend all your time um, prepping sermons. There's enough stuff out there that you can use. You don't need that. And you need (laughs) to be in front of students. And so the misconception I think that I've learned is that it's it's about uh, connecting with students more than anything on the planet. That's what our job is. Connection. Connection, and yeah. it's our job to equip our leaders and our staffers to connect. Yeah. And so, you know, that's been an interesting misconception for me. Wow. Yeah, that's definitely true. Um, what are some of the biggest challenges that you've had to face or maybe some bad experiences that you've had? It hasn't been that long, but I'm sure that you've had some challenges already. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. So first off, from the personal standpoint, uh I am a worship guy at heart. Yeah, me too. Same. So if you told me that I just needed to get up and like play some songs, Mm -hmm. great. Yeah. No problem. Easy. When you have to get up in front of like anywhere from 25 to 65 high school students and try to keep their attention on some sort of message that you are passionate about and they could literally care less about. Right. That is 
been such a challenge to figure out how, like, how do you communicate? How do you bring your own personal life into it enough to, like, make it interesting? And um, it's been a challenge. And also, dude, like, I, when I was at my last church, I did pre, I did teach, like, once every five weeks, okay? At our current church, I only taught twice. So I am, like, rusty. You're rusty, bro rusty so not only am i rusty but i would much rather get up in front of like the people who have some grace the older people the adults like us people who've learned how to listen and yeah yeah and want to be there and all the things you know i would way rather like uh, get up like a nightmare man. in front of them and have to like knock the dust off but yeah. no it's just like to the wolves man into the trenches yeah yeah here we go so that that part has been challenging um personally yeah and then also the other challenge that we're facing right now is it is just a different world than when we were in high school yeah oh for sure i mean i was homeschooled all the way through yeah fun fact the first time i was in a public <laughs> school classroom i was teaching walk the talk at sonora high and i just led with that i was like hey so uh fun fact this is the first time i've ever been in the high school classroom because i was homeschooled so you know Oh, man. Yeah, uh, it's, it is definitely different. You know, I say that. It's different. And it is different. But like sin is sin, man. And the, the the temptations of sin have not changed in, you know, thousands of years. Right? Because the devil, he's not that sneaky, bro. Yeah. You know, like, they he might have a different direction that he attacks people, but... It's it's still the same thing, but you're right. It's definitely a different a different culture than when we were kids. I mean, yeah. I mean, we have these portals in our pocket. Mm -hmm. Every single person does to the entire world. Um, yeah, it's 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 crazy. And what I mean by different, I think I was just like almost to that misconception idea. I was thinking that I was going to have to walk through porn. Mm -hmm. I was going to have to walk through underage drinking. I was going to have to walk through um you know like premarital sex mm -hmm. i thought that these were the topics that mm -hmm. i was going to be hitting you know i didn't think that i was going to be having to go deep dive on depression mm -hmm. deep dive on For anxiety sure. yeah i have you know we had in the county wide we had ton like a lot more than i even want to say on here um attempted suicides during the christmas break oh really and um, wow. some that are even close to our heart wow and um the transgender so issues yeah. and you know all of these things where i'm like learning really quick i literally am talking to therapists uh on the phone probably twice or three times a week mm. and trying to build out what it looks like to have some sort of community event awareness something like we have to we have to stand behind especially this idea of depression yeah and so it's just like that's a challenge because yeah. i just thought like oh i can talk about like what a porn addiction how it affects you you know yeah. i can talk about that i can talk about how premarital sex um creates so much havoc in the marriage in the future right. and explain why i can mm -hmm. talk about why drugs are bad i can talk about alcohol addiction sure right but when it comes to things that i i maybe necessarily haven't struggled with mm -hmm. or ever even seen yeah it's like whew, mind-blowing you know and having had uh, personal interactions with people with depression you know it's it's not it's a very difficult situation you know you can't just shake it off it's not just in your head yeah. you know um and so um building awareness learning about therapy learning about um yeah learning about getting help and getting treatment is so big right um yeah I, that's amazing and then also just that piece of like, how do we create, how do we, how do we make or help the students know that they're known by God? Yeah. That's like my mantra for 2023. You are known. You are known by the Father. And so, you know, it's just that place of like, how do we, how do we help the students grasp that they're known by a heavenly Father that created them? that knows them how do we mm -hmm. you know this is a question i ask every person and um i always say i don't know i say this a lot 
which is like, I feel like this is an easy question to answer, but I'm, I'm going to stop saying that. This is your last person I'm going to say that to, because I don't want to put words in your mouth, even though I feel like it's an easy question to answer. But um, I want to know from you, which is what about this fills your bucket? Why do you do it? Peace. What do you mean by that? So for the first time in years, I have peace that I know that I'm chasing after what God has for me. Yeah. For like, it was number one, it was automatic between me and my wife and being a married guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the end of that discussion. <laughs> We're doing that. <laughs> my wife and I had to come home the day uh, about five hours before everybody else from Hume. Mm. We hopped in my truck. We're driving home and I had not, we were both there mm -hmm. and I had barely spoken to her. Right. Cause you're busy. Yeah. <laughs> I did shave a sweet mustache in. I had let my kids shave a sweet mustache in for you. <laughs> and mustache. my wife walked right by me. We've been married for 17 years. She walked right by me. Didn't even recognize me. It was epic. Nice. So we get in the car, we're driving home and I said, I think I want to apply for the youth pastor position and sell the companies and change, change everything basically about our yeah. lives. And she's like, yup. Exactly. <laughs> she said, I, I was praying that you were going to ask me that. Oh my gosh. And then we drove for the four hours that it takes to drive home from Hume and we did nothing but dream about what it would look like to wow. be in the ministry. So wow. there's, it's a two part for me. It's the peace of knowing that I'm, living out my calling right now mm -hmm. and then number two i have been in ministry i mm -hmm. have been in ministry for you know my whole life basically some form my wife and i have never been in ministry together wow and to see my wife chase after these kids yo that's what's up <laughs> and dude. i'm just like oh my gosh i number one i couldn't be more attracted to you Number two, like, how do we get to call this a life? How do we get to call this a job? How do we get paid for this? Like, it is literally the best, the best thing ever. It's amazing. So that's what fills my bucket. It's the peace that I know that I'm chasing after what God has for me in my life right now. That's amazing. And getting to do it with my wife. That's incredible. You know, when I had um, Ryan Lochi on, and we talked about doing worship leading, and he talked to when he was going to school and he went through all this stuff. And then when it came time to, to do like the final or whatever, um, the, the, the boss or whatever was like, okay, it's time to, to send you off in the world where you're going to decide that your career for your entire life is worship ministry. If you can do anything else, do that. Yeah. If you can do go, I want you, I want you to take a week or so and reflect. And if you can do anything else, do that. And if you, after your reflection, realize that, no, you can't do anything else. You must do this, then do this. I feel like you've found that, Yeah. you know, because you, you know, you were doing a bunch of other stuff and, and man, it's just, I'm so, um, I'm just so excited to hear what the Lord is doing. And, um, when I did youth, you know, I wrangled my wife into it also. And just to see their the love and the, the passion from your wife's side and yeah i'm just so excited that's yeah. amazing what a great answer do you have you're pretty new at this yes so you might not have i always call this a um what you do you have what you might call a signature move or maybe a veteran move you haven't been long enough i'm to not do a veteran a i don't veteran have a veteran move. Move. but do you have something that 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 you might consider like the jason rivera <laughs> signature move of doing youth group yes youth make ministry? fun of myself oh when I am watching my students begin to not pay attention to me during a message, mm -hmm. I say something loudly, right? Mm -hmm. The worship, the worship part of me is yeah. like, here's my voice now. And here's my voice when I need to get your attention. Um, and so, uh, I feel like it's been super helpful lately to just like say something silly about myself. <laughs> Because yeah. I have tons. I mean, I have tons. Better than making fun of them. <laughs> yeah. Which is easy. It's easy. Yeah. Because they're miserable. They're these miserable high school students. It's really easy to Dude. make fun of them. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna, I am I know you're the interviewer. I got a Go one for question for you. Sure. Freshman boy. Mm -hmm. Plate of cookies. Mm -hmm. No limit on how many you can have. 
how many cookies did said freshman boy eat? All of them? I know, but I mean, just take a wild guess at a number. Like, are you oh, talking? And I'll tell you, I'll tell you, it you was talking, in a five minute span. Okay, so are you talking for me or, or there, this was an actual this scenario? This was an actual scenario that happened on Sunday night. Okay, and so there, there was a freshman boy, mm -hmm. there was a plate of cookies. Yeah, and that's just for, you know, for your guessing, there was probably 70 cookies on said plate. Oh, um, I'm going with 25. 22. <laughs> Five minutes, dude. I'm like, how, number one, how are you still alive? <laughs> number two, how are you still answering questions? Like, because <laughs> all you have is cookie crumbs, like, everywhere. <laughs> And do you have a girlfriend? No, I wonder why. <laughs> uh, freshman. I have one, <sighs> so it's just great for me. Because yeah. Ryden is a freshman this year. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I think Elena's going to be next year. When you homeschool, you have no idea what, what, grade? what grade anybody's I in. I graduated as at the end of my yeah. sophomore year. And my mom just said, Bob, you have enough credits to graduate. <laughs> yeah. We, um, we had a whole episode about we do, we homeschool, but not just that we do unschooling. Okay. So we don't even have curriculum or anything. We just let the, the kids um, follow their interests with support. Yeah. And so it's, it's even less schooly than I'm sure yours was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I don't know what grade my school is in, where my, my children are in. Uh, you know, there's schools, you know, you're always in school. You're never in school. It's, it's always a learning opportunity, which works really good for our kids for the most part. It's cool. Um, but yeah, it, it is pretty cool. And I, I encourage you to check that out if you haven't checked it out, but it's a, it's a really good episode. But, um, but yeah, I have no idea what grade my kids are in. I know how old they are. That's what matters. That's the part you can matters. extrapolate what grade they're supposed to be in by their age. Yeah. Yes, that's true. Um, do you have uh, something that you might consider a guilty pleasure? And I feel like youth is so full of guilty pleasures. Oh, my gosh. Dude. It's all guilty pleasures. Oh, my gosh. It has to be dodgeball. Dodgeball? I mean. <laughs> to explain. You have a rubber ball. You get to pick it up. You get to chuck it at any student you want. <laughs> yeah, that sounds pretty good. So said 22 cookie student, <laughs> dodgeball to the face. <laughs> oh, I'm out because I hit you in the face? Dang it. Darn. Shucks. No. Oh, darn. <laughs> no, we barely play dodgeball, but I do have tons of guilty pleasures in the in the thing in you know my job it's uh i don't know it's just all fun right now yeah you know it's so new so it's all fun i love that uh i can consider it my work to take kids snowboarding nice mm -hmm. yeah i can yeah it's great that's amazing um you will you haven't been doing this that long but do you have a moment that you might consider your favorite or your best moment so far? Something that you look back and you think, man, that was just, that was just like so good. We did a flannel formal event. <laughs> okay. So everybody had to dress in flannel. I love flannel, obviously. Obviously. Yeah. Um, everybody had to dress in flannel. We did uh, all kinds of fun games and prizes. And my best work ever was Mr. Inviting Mr. Eric Turner and sure. Emily Turner. Okay. They dressed up Friends as of ours. the Grinch and Cindy Lou Who. And I have my son, my six-year-old, has an electric um, like dirt bike, but it's like a race dirt bike. Mm -hmm. And um, so Eric comes in dressed up as the Grinch with Emily sitting on the handlebars, and we're playing that new modern Grinch song. Okay. And he's just like ripping through the sanctuary on this dirt bike. And I'm like, number one, this has to be the first time this has ever happened. And I can't wait to talk to whoever is going to talk to me about this. But number two. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely getting in trouble for this one. Yeah. Okay, we're having a meeting on Tuesday yeah. or Monday or whatever. Yeah, so that part. But the, um, the fact that our youth group, because when I took over the youth group, it was at three students. Oh, wow. And you have experience with that youth group. It has been upwards of 100. Yeah, 100 plus. plus yeah. Easy. And so wow. we had about 65 students there for that event. And it was, I sat back at the end and it was like, we did it. It mm, was cool. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah, that's really cool. This week's episode of the show is brought to you by 
living outside of your comfort zone. You know, I'm talking to Jason this week and he has such an amazing story of how he was running a small business that turned into two small businesses and all of a sudden his life was radically changed because of one small decision that he made. And so I would just encourage you to maybe live outside of your comfort zone a little bit and see where that leads you. You know, I was just talking to my son in the car about how as a people, it's very easy to be um, selfish. It's our nature to be selfish. And the way that we fight selfishness is through selflessness. And it's very hard to do that because it's very easy to be selfish. So I just encourage you today, whatever your beliefs are, whoever you are as a person, to try to be selfless, to live outside of your comfort zone, um, and uh, try to make decisions that way for the betterment of the world, for the betterment of humanity. Um, and even though it's hard and it's not fun, it, it just is better for everybody. And uh, yeah, I just encourage you to do that. I will try to do so as well. Also, one other thing, you know, I always try to get people to find one way or another to try to help grow the show. You know, we have a pretty consistent listener base, but it's not really growing there very much. And I am working so hard on the show and I'm having so much fun. And I would love for this show to grow a little bit. Specifically, I'd love to see the numbers on the audio format of the show grow. So if you have a podcast player, um, maybe uh, Spotify or uh, Apple Podcasts or even Audible or Stitcher or iHeartRadio, if you have a um, host like that, you can pull that up on your phone. You can search for N plus one podcast, Obsessed with Obsession. You can find the show. You can click follow. You can find an episode and give it a rating. A five-star review is amazing. Um, you can click subscribe, you know, listen to an episode or two. Maybe if you got a road trip or if you're driving around, you can listen to the shows. Um, and that really helps the show out. And, uh, you know, if you're listening to the show, it starts to pop up in the feed for other people. Another thing you can do is to find an episode that you think is interesting and send it to someone that you think might find it interesting also. That really helps to grow the show. And uh, we're just trying to get the word out so I can keep doing it because I love doing it. Um, anyway, that's it for today. We're going to get you back to Jason and his wonderful stories. You are freshly thrown into the fire mm -hmm. as the new youth pastor of mm -hmm. Zero Bible Church. Um, I feel like you have unique perspective on this. Yeah. So if someone was sitting here today listening to this podcast yes. and they had to do the same thing that you just had to do. Yes. What advice would you get them? Maybe something to, to skip, something you wish you would have done differently. What advice would you have to someone that was going to have to do the same thing? Download youth ministry. What does that mean? So what do you mean by that? There's a company. Um, it's called Download Youth Ministry. Okay. My first week on the job, Nate sent me to a conference uh, from Download Youth Ministry down in Irvine. And um, they do everything for you. They just came out with a new platform called Co-Leader. And um, it is literally a lifesaver. So you remember how, I don't, I don't know. Have you done, have you done much with Planning Center? Um, I've done a little bit. Okay. So yeah. when I introduced Planning Center as the, um, as the part-time worship pastor at, Sierra, at our church. Uh, Let me butt in real quick and just explain if you are not familiar, if you're just listening to this and you're not a churchy person, Planning Center is software. It's kind of geared towards church people. I guess you, I guess you could use it for other things, but it, it helps to organize um, the, the stuff that's going to happen on a Sunday. You have all your music. You have your, your, your church. Your service plan has all the music. Uh, you know, it, it sends out um, the schedule to the people that are supposed to be in the band. Everything's in one location in one app. Um, you know, it's a very it's a it's an app that's um, oriented towards churches. It's a it's a really good app. It's very powerful. Uh, yeah. It's a it's it's a tool for that. Yeah, just for the mindset of like, I needed to know who was going to be here. Mm -hmm. So it sends an email and a text message for me. And that so co leader and dym those two together they cost about five hundred dollars a year mm -hmm. to use them, and when you spend that money you get credits to back that you don't pay for, so that you get to buy different things on the things for. So I can buy any game that I want. I could just be like, this is what I'm preaching on. I need a game, 
this game goes really well with it to like mix it up a bunch. But co-leader actually creates the series for you. Mm -hmm. And so I could say I want a four week series on dating. Mm -hmm. It'll create the series and it'll do everything from like, here's your run sheet. This is where you put your announcements. Here's a transition video from mm -hmm. announcements to worship. Here's a good worship song that goes with the message. Mm -hmm. um, here's the message theme outline. Because kind of to my earlier point, like I can't spend all my time prepping this out and it is a time suck. Mm -hmm. If I'm just on planning center and I'm like, okay, this is what I'm preaching about. You know, where am I going? What's this? Where, what are we going to do here? All this kind of thing. So co if you're brand new, Talk your church into giving you five hundred dollars because I know youth budgets are this big, actually like that big. <laughs> I went from having a worship budget to a youth budget, dude. It was like I go to our worship pastor. Budget? Hey, What's that? <laughs> remember how I gave you that job? I need some of your budget. <laughs> so talk them into giving you five hundred dollars and look at co leader because it will literally change the face of your ministry and allow you to do more ministry yeah. and not have to be like spending all your time prepping. Mm. So that's my advice. If you're brand new, um, the things I've made mistakes on, uh, I think, uh, I think not, not paying attention enough to like what our culture is, mm -hmm. you know, with like the transgender issues, okay. things like that, just because we've had some of that come through our ministry and, um, and I wish that I would have had a firm stance on where, how we help, how we love. I have right. no desire to like, oh, you're transgender or gay or lesbian. Like you can't come. Right. That's not my heart. Right. My heart is this is where we stand and this is what I can provide for you. Right. And I want you to come and feel loved and known. Right. And um, th that kind of gets into a little bit to what I, I kind of wanted to this series to be about. And I feel like we haven't really delved into it that much, which is how the church is trying to bridge the gap between, you know, the, per the perception of the modern church and who we are at heart, which is just people who love Jesus that want them to experience Jesus' love, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's at, at its core, right? Which yeah. is that we're all sinners saved by grace. Like, literally, I'm, like, I'm nothing apart from the grace of God, right? right. And... So I don't ever point a finger at anybody for anything. Right. Um, and all I want is to share Jesus's love. Yeah. Right. So how is there, is there something that you've, you know, um, been thinking about as far mm -hmm. as trying to reach maybe um, or change the, the perception of the modern church? So I think that if, yes, yes. So thank you for asking. I think that I, I love uh, the passage talks about it's not our job to judge and convict. Mm -hmm. We are not the judge. Right. God is the judge. Right. We it's, need to take the plank out of our own eye, yes. specifically. Yes. <laughs> it's our job to love. It's right. our job to love people towards the kingdom. Now, that comes with interesting territory because I believe that, um, I mean, just hot on my mind, right, is dealing with a, a, a transgender student who didn't want to go to, you know, we split off our groups into gender mm -hmm. and age, our small groups. Mm -hmm. um, and she, or, you know, didn't, she doesn't identify as a girl. So she didn't want to go to the girl group and it would be weird for her to go to the boy group. So having some systems in place that's like, okay, well, luckily, praise the Lord, I had an extra staffer that could like do one-on-one -on -one group time with this person. Mm -hmm. um, and then at the end, I was like, hey, I'm super sorry that that was uncomfortable for you. You know, but I, I want you to be here. I want you to feel like you're loved by God mm -hmm. because why? I, I just don't understand why they would come if they know what we're going to talk about. And they, you know, to me, it's like almost like a cry, like, hey, I want to know more about who this Jesus character right. is. Maybe it's not. Maybe the parents made him come. I don't know. Yeah. But Jesus wants to meet people where they're at. Right. Right. Like, who did Jesus hang out with? Did Jesus hang out with the people that were prim and proper and perfect and knew everything about the Bible? Right. Did he hang out with the people at church? No. Yes. He, <laughs> he hung right. out with the people that needed church. He yeah. hung out with the people that uh, that needed help. So you my know? best, when I was at the school of worship that I went to, um, it was a big church, New Life Church in Colorado Springs, about 14,000 people. Mm -hmm. um, and I 
had this awesome opportunity to intern as the with the group's pastor, mm -hmm. which allowed me this opportunity to like sit in executive staff meetings. Mm -hmm. I had to be quiet, which is hard for me, <laughs> right? But I got to sit in these meetings, and we had a lesbian couple that started coming, mm -hmm. and um, I remember them getting brought up in a staff meeting, and the senior pastor immediately said, "Love them." Mm -hmm. Love them. Now, if they want to serve, mm -hmm. if they want to do different things like that, we have to have other conversations about what it looks like to follow, you know, this is our this is our biblical model, mm -hmm. right? And about six months later, they came to the pastor and they were like, We want to get baptized, mm -hmm. but we know that we're living in sin. Mm -hmm. And we, we're so thankful for this church for allowing us to experience who the real God is here. And so we need your help to figure out how we're not going to be together. We have kids. There's like all this stuff, mm -hmm. but we want to get baptized and serve God with our lives. And to me, that stuck with me so much because it was like, thank you for being the type of church that's willing to not, I, I think there's a difference. We live in a culture that like kind of pushes themselves mm -hmm. on you. You know, it's not like right. that is what I'm saying, but it's this place like you're free to come and learn about Jesus here. And then from there, if you want to, develop that further and you want to see what it looks like to actually follow god we have to have some real conversation just like you and i would have to have right mm -hmm. like hey if you're going to follow god i had met with students today we talked about the idea of um of asking for forgiveness and i was like this is what it looks like to live in a place of repentance right you have to be willing to confess your sins right and we all have them yes Yes. <laughs> no, yeah. And it's, all it's sin not, is the same. It's, it's yeah. not specific to any one thing or the other. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, uh, this is the thing. And this is one thing when we, when we left Sierra Bible, we started going to um, Twain Heart Bible Church. Our jaws hit the floor because they talked about repentance, mm -hmm. which is something that I hadn't really heard talked about in church mm -hmm. for a long time. Mm -hmm. And like, oh yeah, you got to do that. You yeah. got to repent. You got to, you know, it's not just, it's not just enough to talk about God's glory and his awesomeness and his power and um, that we're forgiven, which is all true. And that's all good stuff, but you need to repent from your sins and ask for forgiveness and turn and go for Jesus. It's not just enough to like go for Jesus. You got to like do the repenting. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and the freedom, the freedom that comes along with it. Yeah. You know, the freedom side of like, okay, I, I mean, my wife and I um, just went through something where, uh, you know, we were doing a Bible reading together and it was talking about this idea of repentance. And I like went to her and I was like, hey, you know, I have some stuff that I just want to talk to you about that I feel like I haven't told you. And it wasn't like sexual or anything like that. It was just like with my businesses and some money that I had borrowed to help keep them running. And it was now going to come out because I was going to have to pay them back mm -hmm. as I sell the companies. And, um, and it was so healthy. Yeah. It was so hard, but it was so healthy and our marriage is better for it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. And so, um, just the freedom that comes with repenting. And I think what's interesting about the modern church right now is that we're living in a place where almost all of us are having to kind of like reshape that idea of talking about repentance. Mm -hmm. It's important. And I just don't think we do it. Right. And so it's, it's not fun. It's, it's not, not shiny. Fun. It's not fun to talk about. Yeah. And it's so critical. It's so important. Yeah. And I think our new, our lead pastor is doing a good job. We just, we're going through a series of being known by God and, um, it was, it was talked about, mm -hmm. you know, that idea of repentance. So, yeah. Um, so we have a section on the podcast that's called let's get into it where we, I don't know, try to do the topic a little bit. Um, you know, when we, uh, had, when we talked to Jed Roberson about photography, he showed us some settings on our phone that we didn't know were hidden in the phone. Um, when we had Kyla Myers on and we talked about youth theater, she showed me how, um, how they run stage drills, um, on for, with the, with the, with the kids there. Um, so I was just wondering if there was something that we could do in a couple minutes, um, that is, uh, related to, um, youth or youth ministry. Um, if you, if there was something that you came to mind, I'm down, I'm game. Okay. Oh, man. Um, I mean, I got chocolate syrup. We want to play Chubby Bunny. 
you know, we can't always do it. Sometimes, you know, sometimes we can think of things. We can't always do it, but yeah. Um, Sorry. That's okay. We can't, like I said, we can't always think of something and it, you know. I'm also brand new. He's brand new. Yeah. Can he we... doesn't have a whole arsenal. Let's get of... into it. Let's talk about snowboarding. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we can maybe have you back on to talk about Star Wars. Yeah. I will bring, I will, if I ever come back on, I will bring a let's get into it. Double down. Double down. Okay. okay. So this is um, the point of the show. N plus one podcast mm -hmm. and i'm so excited to hear about this from you mm -hmm. what is next what is on the horizon i know you're selling your businesses you mentioned that yeah you're going all in full time yeah um what is on the horizon what are you looking forward to what is next yeah so i mean a lot right so we're doing um i think the first sense out of the last three youth pastors we're doing winter camp this year oh cool and Those so, are the best. I love winter camps. Yeah, so I rented a place. And I mean, we just have such a beautiful community. It's so great up right? here. Yeah. I was listening to you talk to your buddy who lives in Oregon, and you were saying how Oregon's better. Come on, man. Come on. Oregon's really beautiful, <laughs> it's dude. It's pretty. I know. So, dude, Oregon's so beautiful. So I rented a place up here. We actually have a, like another church in the area that has mm -hmm. some a lodge. Mm -hmm. uh, Word of Life Fellowship has a lodge. Yeah. And so... We rented the whole campus, mm. um, and we're going to go up there. We're going to have a Friday night session, and then Saturday we're going to go snowboarding or tubing all day, and then Saturday night session and Sunday morning session. And my yeah. hope, like my hope for this is that we get to kind of, you know that mountaintop idea that you get out of Hume? Yep. Yeah. So my hope is that I have 50 students, because that's all we're taking, mm -hmm. 50 students that will either commit their life to Christ for the first time or recommit their life to mm -hmm. Christ. Because what I've learned about students recently is somewhere in this 16 to 17, there's a lot of questions about, oh, yeah? is this all a fairy tale? Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's like, okay, I can't wait. I'm, I'm so looking forward to winter camp. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, just the sale of the businesses yeah. and, uh, Really being able to take 2023 as this like whole new thing. Like I fully trusting in God that he's going to provide for my family and, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to, we're going to survive. Yeah. Um, I'm going to give you some encouragement for winter camp. Let's do it. Because um, I mentioned you, I went, mentioned Hume. Yeah. And my life was changed as a youth at Hume uh -huh. and my wife was changed again in college at a winter camp. And I, I, was, I remember when I was in uh, at the college ministry at, um, in Modesto and we went up to a winter camp in Arnold. And, you know, Modesto was awful. I just remember going to this winter camp with all of my college buddies from, from uh, the college group at church. And I just remember sitting on this couch next to Daniel Hoyt. Hi, Daniel, if you ever listen to this. And... Um, just sitting there feeling the presence of God so strong. I turned to him and asked, I'm like, dude, do you feel that? You know, and, um, and those, those winter camps, they can be so um, powerful and impactful. And it was just a weekend, you know, it was just like, like you said, Friday, Saturday, Sunday or something like that. And, and that was when I, I like redirected my life where, you know, like in high school, I was like, okay, this is real. And in college, it was like, okay, we're doing this. Yeah. This is, this is, we're not messing around. We're definitely doing this. But I wanted to give you some encouragement. Okay. Because you're doing a snow day. Yes. And you're going to be snow, snowing all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I want you, I want to encourage you. You're a very outdoorsy person. Yes. And there's a lot of people, there's going to be people that are coming. Mm-hmm. Let's just say they're maybe a little bit like me that are, let's just say, not very outdoorsy. Okay. And I just want you to maybe keep them in mind. Yeah. Okay. And just keep keep in mind the not very outdoorsy people, um, maybe the not very athletic people, um, and just have some, just see, keep some, something in mind for them. Yeah. Um, and people like me at events like that, can feel left behind and can feel left out. Mm -hmm. Everyone else is having fun. And, you know, 
man, that sure looks like fun. And I'm not going up that hill again. Yeah. Because, you know, it was, it was fun once and now I'm just miserable and cold. So yeah. think about that. Yeah. Okay. So if, if, you know, if you were going to winter camp and you're not, you know, you're not as excited about the snow day, I have like a... Uh, well, I, I might be excited. And then maybe you climb up the hill and you tube and you're like, wow, that was exhausting. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not Did doing you that again. Need to climb up? I, I, see, I don't know. I'm just saying. Yeah. Um, I'm just saying, I, I don't know. Just um, yeah, maybe so, have different things. Maybe have, bring some games yeah, to that's play. What, that's what we're doing. Because yeah. the, the people that aren't going to ski or snowboard, it's like only four hours mm -hmm. that they can tube. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, so we're like giant Jenga um all of the all of the games we have some huge dice mm -hmm. and we're gonna have like this fun dice game that you mm -hmm. could play um but yeah you have to because i have students right that are like i don't want to go to winter camp because i have no desire to snowboard right and i'm like no you have to go to winter camp because you want to experience jesus and so right. let's find something else for you to do right that's going to be just as fun right for you know you'll have just as much fun as you know we uh i have a really good relationship with our local ski resort mm -hmm. and they're they're basically like giving me some really good rain. I'm excited. Yeah. Okay. So I wanted to say thank you so much for coming on. This has been amazing. It was everything I hoped it would be. Maybe we'll have you on again to talk about snowboarding or talking about uh, running a small business. Or, I mean, you're you're a really good friend and you are very passionate about a lot of things. Yeah. Um, maybe we'll have you on again um, when you're an old vet and yeah. talk about the All mistakes the you made. All the mistakes I made. All the mistakes um, I made. So... Um, how can people um, find you? Uh, you? Where are you serving at? Um, yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah, so I'm serving at Sierra Bible Church. That is in Sonora, in Sonora, California. Yep. yep. And um, we have Instagram, Sierra Bible Youth, uh, Sierra Bible Church Youth. And I am on Instagram or Facebook, just Jason Rivera. Some of it comes up as Ryden's dad because, you know, that's my like handle, nice. Ryden's dad. Uh, so yeah, I would love to connect with anybody who has questions or concerns yeah. and, um, and wants to know more. Like I'd love to. So. And thank you for having me on, man. It's been super Good. fun to connect. I've been talking to my wife for probably a month and a half or maybe two months. Like I want to have Jason on and I don't even know what I want to talk to him about. She's like, just message him that. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, we found something to talk to you about. Yeah. Um, so I have two silly questions Okay. before we go. This is like my favorite part of the show. Okay. Um, I want you to say a sim <laughs> sentence and casually drop the name of the most famous person you've ever met. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> um, I, I mean, but they might, you know, it doesn't matter if you know him. So yeah, I, uh, was snowboarding one time and got called out by a guy named Sean White. We were riding. Sean White, bro. <laughs> we were riding on the chairlift together. <laughs> no way. Yeah. And I asked him, uh, how you do. I was I could land the 720 and I wanted to move to the 900 and I said how do you do it and he said it's just another 180 and I was like thank you for the advice <laughs> you just keep going you bro. just keep spinning dude it's not that hard okay <laughs> all right I will go die now thank you <laughs> that's a great story yeah oh my goodness that's awesome Sean White famous uh, snowboarder and skateboarder mm -hmm. here's your name drop card name drop yeah so and then the question of the show what is in your opinion the greatest all-time cartoon theme song that's not even hard it's veggie tales veggie tales the first for veggie tales <laughs> the mean, homeschooler yeah. big surprise <laughs> gives us veggie tales yeah if you want to waltz with tomatoes yeah that's yeah, amazing. You should, uh, I don't know if you can do this legally or not, but there's a new VeggieTales song that's a rap, and I play it every week at youth group. <laughs> and my kids have no idea what this is. Okay, I will link that in the show notes. <laughs> yeah. I don't put the songs um, in the in the episode, uh, but I will link the new <laughs> VeggieTales rap in the show notes. But yeah. That's a great answer. I haven't had a VeggieTales yet. That's amazing. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Well, thanks again so much yeah. for coming on the show. This has been delightful. You've been delayed. It's been great catching up with you. Um, 
If you are watching this show or listening to it right now, thank you so much for tuning in. If you're on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or Audible or however you're listening to this, just give it a heart or a thumbs up or whatever. If you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and give it a, a subscribe. That always helps us out um, and helps our podcast to grow. And the most important thing you can do would be to grab this episode and share it with a friend. Um, we're doing a whole mini series on, on church leaders in the modern church. We'll, we're making a whole playlist of that. You can follow those episodes. Another thing you can do is that you can join the Facebook group, the N plus one podcast Facebook group. You can join up there. That's where we can talk about the episodes. We can share our own hobbies and passions and obsessions. I want to know what you're working on. I want to know, I want to see your art. I want to see your guitars. I want to see what the mountains that you're climbing. Um, you can weigh in on the episodes. If you have a guest suggestion or a topic suggestion, you can drop it in there. Um, I want to know what you guys want to hear about. You can drop it in there. So um, that's what I have to say. And until next time, guys, uh, don't be a jerk. <laughs>